Hello church, hello River of Life and Greenwood family. Thank you for joining us once again uh, for service. Before we get there, I do want to let you know some announcements that are coming up in December. Uh, the first of which, we still have our Connected Youth Ministry still going strong. Um, if you don't know, it's our youth and young adult ministry uh, that we meet up different platforms, uh, one of which is Zoom. We are introducing, starting in December, youth and young adult services. We're doing that on Zoom every other Tuesday. Uh, we still have our IG Live going strong on Instagram, as well as prayer on Saturday through Zoom. So if you'd like to get connected with that, let us know down below. Amen. Uh, kids are cool. They're still going strong as well. Every Sunday at 11 o'clock, our teacher blesses our little ones with a service um, and a craft. So it's a great time to get your kids um, fed, amen, spiritually through that time. Um, we have a few things going on special this month. The first of which we have two special services. Our Christmas service we're really excited and looking forward to. That's going to be airing 1220. So December 20th, uh, that's the Sunday before Christmas, we're going to be doing our Christmas service. Um, and then the 27th, the following Sunday after that, we're going to be doing our New Year Anniversary Service. We're uh, trying to make that special for, for you and uh, your family, so we pray that you would tune in to uh, special services. Amen. Same time, 10-15, um, but just trying to make them a little extra fun for you. Um, we also encourage, this is a season of giving, and so we, our pastors actually threw out a challenge for us this month, and we wanted to uh, give that to you right now. It's to go ahead and find a give, amen, find a give, which is uh, go out and try to bless a family member or family in need. Um, one of the things that they want to encourage us to do is uh, you could look up through um, internet chips for kids, which is a CHP. Uh, there's the multiple drop-off sections where you could um, go ahead and donate an unwrapped gift. Um, and they will go ahead and take that gift and disperse it throughout the community. So again, we uh, as pastors want to extend that challenge to you. Look for a give. Look for a way to be a blessing. Look for a way to be God's hands and his feet. Amen. Um, just to be able to pour out love. Um, we know that we are going to be able to bless our family and our friends and our close loved ones. Um, but we also still want to make sure we're blessing those that um, are less fortunate, um, and even though we can't do it together as a family, we traditionally do this together. We bless the community um, because of the circumstances. Pastor still wanted to uh, throw out a challenge to bless your community. So make sure you look up a location, try to get some toys together, go to a drop-off site, and go ahead and drop off those donations. Um, and we just pray blessings upon you during the season as you do that. We know God uh, will provide and meet the needs and go beyond that, amen, so that it would overflow to others. Um, so that's our announcements for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Be blessed. Saints, it is that time to bless the Lord. Thank you once again. I know you're probably tired of hearing this from me, but we genuinely do mean it. Thank you so much for sowing the seed into this ministry. Thank you for partnering with us, catching God's vision for this ministry and going alongside of us. Um, it is through your generosity, it's through your giving, it's through your obedience, above all, amen, uh, that we get to do this uh, ministry in this way. Um, so we just thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts to just be generous and to be so uh, liberal, amen, um, with what God has given you. We so appreciate it. If you're joining us for the first time or you want to jump on in and partner with us and sow a seed of faith, uh, you can do that. There's three different ways, amen, the first of which is Cash App. You could send that to ROL. CCSGV. Uh, we do have Venmo. You can send that to River of Life Christian Church. Um, the last means is Zelle. You could send that to ROLCCSGV at yahoo.com. Whichever way you give, we do receive it. And we just want to thank you once again for partnering with us, to be generous with us um, in this season. Amen. We pray blessings upon you. Good morning, River of Life. I am so happy for you uh, to join us again this beautiful Sunday morning. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that your spirit is, is thirsty and hungry for the Word of God. I pray that this Word that I bring forth today really just speaks to your heart, that it, that it quenches a thirst and settles a hunger that, 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 that is so desperately needed. Um, I am so honored to be able to bring this Word to you this morning. Um, I really feel like the Spirit of God has spoken to my heart and has given me a word that is timely, that speaks to us where we are at right now in this very time. Um, just to give a quick 
uh, backstory and how I got this message or how I came to this message. I've been talking with my wife. I've been talking with my family. I've been talking with friends. And there's a common, a common theme or a common subject or a common phrase that keeps coming up. And that phrase, if you will, is, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of where we're at. I'm tired of this COVID thing. I'm tired of just being, you know, concerned. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of, you know, having so many questions. I'm just tired. And so this morning, that is what I really wanted to bring to you this morning in, in, in regards to, um, I want to be able to encourage you to, even though you may be tired or you may be frustrated or you may be disappointed or you may feel like you're just, you're just tired of being tired. Um, I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning to keep fighting to keep pushing, to keep lifting your hands and glorifying God, to continue to, to press into his spirit, to not give in, to not throw in the towel, to not, uh, to not feel like you know, all hope is lost or there's no, 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 no more fight in you. I want to encourage you to continue to press into the spirit of God. I want to encourage you to continue to lift up your family as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an offering to God, knowing that that, that your family, that you, that your job, that your friends are all better off in the hands of God. Amen. So before we go any further, I just want to lift us up in a word of prayer. If you, if you don't mind, just bowing your heads. Heavenly Father, right now we just come before you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory, first of all, God. We come, Lord God, just to learn about you, Father. Before we offer anything to you, Father, we know, Lord, that we need to accept you. We need to accept your word. We need to accept, Father, the, the living word, the water, Father, that is that, that will come forth, Lord God, to quench our thirst, Lord. We need to accept it, Lord God. So, Father, right now we come, Lord God, with open hearts, open minds, Father. We come with a spirit that, that desires you before anything else, my God. We just praise you, Father. We love you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you don't notice, I'm in a different setting today, but I do want you to uh, still get the, the, the word. So uh, we're not going to have any, uh, any, any words or, or the Bible up on a, on a screen today. So I encourage you, grab your Bible, press pause real quick, grab your Bible, grab your phone, grab your tablet, whatever you use uh, to get into the word, grab that and follow me along. Uh, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, um, and I'm going to start at verse 8, and I'm going to read through verse 15, okay? Verses 8 through 15 in Exodus chapter 17. Uh, so once again, if you don't have your Bibles with you right now, go ahead and press pause uh, and uh, go ahead and grab that uh, and uh, open up to Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Um, I just want to read this really quick. Uh, it says uh, in verse 8, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Verse 9, Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of your men and go out to fight the Am uh, Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur uh, went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Mo then when Moses' when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua, this is in verse 13. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. Verse 14, then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to, re, uh, to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of, of Amalek from under heaven. 
And finally, verse 15, Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. Church, the Lord is our banner. Let me start with that. Let me start with that. Remember who you belong to. Do not forget. Do not let circumstance, do not let situation, do not let frustration, depression, anxiety, uh, heartache, failure, uh, disappointment, uh, death. Do not let these things of this world cause you to forget who you belong to. Amen. I think it's so important in this time, this day, in this in these situations where we're just trying to figure it out as we go, that we don't forget who we belong to first and foremost. And I know I, I started this by saying, you know, the, the common thing that I kept on hearing from, from, you know, my family, from friends, from coworkers, whoever you talk to, the common thing you keep on hearing is, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. So I, I, I started to go into scripture and, and, and look, and there are so many, there are so many stories of people growing tired from situations around them, from constantly having to fight, from constantly having to, to, to figure things out. People are constantly getting tired. But I really feel like God pressed in on my heart this bit of scripture, this story. Because there's so many of us that are fighting not only for ourselves, but for others as well. We may have family members or friends or co-workers or acquaintances that, that, that are finding themselves at, at a place where they're just tired and, and they don't know who to turn to. Or they're, they're finding themselves turning to things that, that are more destructive than they are beneficial. And I encourage you and I implore you to lift your hands for them. Lift them up. Because we, make no mistake about it, are in a battle. We are fighting right now. There are so many things that are trying to break us down, to beat us down, to get us and cause us to submit. The world being one of them. And, and, and if we go back to our scripture, that's where, we, that's where we, we find the Israelites. That's where we find God's chosen people in a place where they're just tired, where they're just exhausted, where they're just frustrated. If you go back and you, you, you go to verse 1 in Exodus chapter 17, I want you to, to, to listen to this real quick. In verse 1 it says, The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. Watch this. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Two. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. They have been traveling. They have been fighting with each other. They're on each other's nerves. They're, they're at a place where they're just very dry, where they're very just ugh, irritated. Sound familiar? Does that sound familiar, church? And Moses is just doing his best to get the word from God and give it to the people and the direction from God and take the people. And yet they still find themselves quarreling with each other, fighting with each other, finding conflict in, in, within each other. Looking at their leaders and saying, at their leader and saying, you're bringing us to a dry place. We're traveling the desert and we have no water. We're thirsty. We're tired. We're exhausted. Exhausted. And again, this is why I feel like God is in, has placed this story on my heart because I feel like there are so many people that can relate. So many people can relate right now to those feelings. So the first thing that I really wanted to acknowledge was who, the, who, who we belong to, the banner that we fly. You belong to God, which means this, that you are part of the Israelites in this story. 
So when it's talking about God's chosen people, he's talking to you and I. The second thing I really wanted to just uh, talk about today was identifying who the enemy really is. Because when we read in verse 1 and 2, that it's, the people start imploding. They start uh, fighting with each other. They stop forgetting of, about the Egyptians who they just left, right? The slavery that they just came from. They, they lose sight of who the enemy really is. They, re- don't really, they, they lose sight of that God is taking them into a land of plenty, into a land of promise, into the land flowing with milk and honey that God promised his people. Sometimes I feel like we forget, even as his chosen people today, the promises that he has given us. And we start to look at our our situation. We start to look at our place that we live in right here, right now, or the situation we're in right here, right now, and we forget what God has called us to, where God is taking us. And we start fighting with each other. We start fighting with God. We start questioning the the calling. We start questioning the, the obedience. We start questioning the sacrifice. We start questioning the creator. We start questioning everything. And not only questioning, but fighting against it. We need to identify who the real enemy is. Realize that it's not God the Father. It's not the calling on your life. It's not the promise that he gave you. But it's the the world and all that is within it that continues to try to distract us and pull us away. The next thing is we need to really understand how God works in, in a time of battle, in a time of frustration, in a time of weakness, right? We realize that the Israelites in verse 1 and 2 were already at wit's end. They were already frustrated. They were already anxious. They were already fighting with, it, with each other. And then to top it off, they start getting attacked, right? By the, the Amalekites, right? So not only were they, were they already frustrated with each other, they found themselves in a time of weakness, the, 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 the battle starts to find them. As if God didn't see that they, they were already fighting within themselves, he threw something else on top of them. But let me tell you this, God knows that if he gives you a common enemy, right? If he, if he pulls you away and says, look, that is the enemy. That is who you're fighting. That is who was against you. It is not your fellow believer. It is not your brother and sister in Christ. It is not your pastor. It's not your leader. It's, it's, it's the world. He knows that we can unite. He knows that we are stronger when we are together. Just a couple weeks ago, we were in prayer and the Spirit of God completely took over. Completely took over and there was a word brought and a quick commercial. If you don't join us on, on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. for prayer, you are more than welcome. Uh, you can send a text or and call myself. You can call our pastor. You can call Jean, my, my mom. You can call uh, my wife. Uh, you can call either one, any of us, and we will uh, get you that information. But going back to what I was talking about, the Spirit of God completely took over, and the word was brought, and it was... Now is not the time to stray away. Now is not the time to turn your back. But now is the time to draw closer to God. Now is the time to run to God. Because that is where our safety and our security and our peace of mind is. And that, 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 that resonates so loudly in this message here. Instead of fighting against each other or fighting within yourself, remember that, there is a, that, that we have a common enemy and he is out to kill, steal, and destroy. He is looking to, and seeking uh, whoever, whoever he can devour. He is looking to destroy. He is looking to divide. He is looking to, uh, to, to, to completely destroy what God has built within our lives. 
And if we identify that and we unite and we turn to God and say, Father, this is who I am. This is the battle that I face. And I know that I am weak without you. But Father, with you, I am strong. With you, I am more than a conqueror. With you, Father, I know I have patience. In you, Father, I know that I am, that I am steadfast in you father and with you i know that i can defeat this enemy i can have victory over these battles but it's when we have a common enemy and we truly identify it look at moses we look at moses in uh, verse 11 of our text, Exodus chapter 17, verse 11, it says, As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. When you were tired, it is not time to throw in the towel. When you are tired, it is not time. It's not the time for you to give up. When you are tired, when you are frustrated, when you find yourself at the end of your tolerance, when you find yourself in a place of just, ugh, it is not the time to lower your hands, but there, it, is a, it is the time to praise even more, to praise your way through victory, pra praise your way worship God in your in your battle so he sees you through your uh, to your victory that is the ultimate goal here is to see victory in our lives to see victory in our families to see victory in our homes Moses found himself at a place where he was physically exhausted he could not hold up his hands any longer but what do you see here What do you see? It says, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone. Remember, he had Aaron and her with him. He had people supporting him. He had people lifting him up. He had people that had his back and knew that they were going to support him, that they were going to lift him up, that they were going to do anything it took to see victory in their, in, within, the, within Israel. That is who you have. You have leaders that are constantly praying for you. You are not alone. You are not forgotten. You are not left out to dry by yourself. You are backed. It says in verse 12, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it and Aaron and her held his hands up for him to make sure that there was victory. Beyond exhaustion, God still gives victory. Beyond frustration, there is still victory. Beyond a time of, of, of doubt and uncertainty, there is still victory for the believer, for the one that continues to lift their hands, for the one that continues to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. There is a victory that is for you with your name on it, but you cannot give up. You cannot throw in the towel. You cannot let go. You can't let up. You need to press in, press forward, and press up. This story is so powerful. It's so powerful because it's so real and so relevant. So many of us are feeling tired. So many of us want to let go, but the Word of God is telling us right here in plain black and white that it is not the time to give in, but the time to press in. I encourage you this morning, let your spirit come alive. Let your spirit rise up. Let your spirit catch flame and continue and start right now to, to lift up the name of Jesus, to cry out to the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to cry out for victory, to cry out for strength, to cry out for peace of mind, to cry out for your family, to cry out for your co-worker, to cry out for your home, to cry out for yourself. Because you need it. Because they need it. And because the need is found in the Father.
It says in verse 13, So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army, or Amalekite army with the sword. 14, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be, what? Remembered. Our past victories need to be remembered to encourage us in the current battle. Your past victories, your past overcomings, your past conquerings need to be remembered to because you are in a current battle and that, 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 that past victory will launch you into and, and encourage you to continue to fight, to continue to, continue to press, to continue to worship because we know that is where the victory lies. Do not allow yourself or your family to forget your past victories. Verse 15, when everything was said and done, when everything was said and done, I promise you, church, there will be an end to this pandemic. There will be an end to this frustration. There will be an end to this uncertainty. There will be an end to this frustration. There will be an end to your anxiety. There will be an end to your depression. There will be a, a, an end to your, 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 your feeling of defeat. There is an end in sight. God has victory over those things for you. He is going to place them in your hand and you will see the victory. But when the victory comes... And in the midst of the battle, as you're worshiping, when everything is said and done, like Moses did in verse 15, it says Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. I started it by saying the first thing I want you to remember is who you belong to. And the last thing I want you to note this, uh, this morning is who you belong to. It's a perfect it's a perfect beginning and it's a perfect ending to remember who you belong to before the battle within the battle and at the end of battle if you remember who you belong to. The victory is yours. The enemy will not be able to defeat you. The enemy will not be able to conquer you. The, the, the enemy will not be able to overwhelm you. When situations grow tough, when situations grow frustrating, when situations grow tired, when they just exhaust you, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally exhausted, the Spirit of God will continue to give you peace, continue to give you strength to press on. But remember the banner that you fly. Remember who you belong to. And I promise the victory is coming. The victory is coming. I believe right now someone that is hearing this right now, if you're at home, if you're in bed, or if you're in the car, if you're at work, you just need to say that over yourself. Speak it into yourself. Speak it until you believe it. Just simply say, the victory is coming. The victory is coming. The end is near to this frustration, to this doubt, to this anxiety. The, the, the finish is near the end is near i have the victory i will not give in i will my hands will not be let down i will continue to praise within the storm within the battle i will continue to worship i will continue to praise i will continue to press into the the, the spirit of god because there my victory lies church i pray you are blessed I pray the Spirit of God is within you and that your spirit is stirred up and that you know 
that you are not alone and that you know that we are praying for you. Continue to pray for your leaders. Continue to pray for our pastor. Continue to pray for healing within our families. Continue to pray for patience. Continue to lift each other up. And together, just like the Israelites, we'll find victory from not only the world, but from current situations, current battles. We will have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, be blessed. We love you. Amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us this service. We pray blessings. We pray that this message just spoke to your heart. Um, it challenged you and stirred you. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing I, ever, I do all the time, which is uh, three things. The first thing is subscribe. The second thing is hit that notification button. And that third thing is to hit the like button to let us know anything um, that you liked on this service. You could use the comments down below. We just pray blessings upon you once again. We thank you so much for just joining us um, during this season and during this time through this platform. We just pray that you would just feel the abundance of God's love over you and your family. Thank you.